Hello and welcome to John Can Fix Anything. Today I'm going to show you the easiest way I've found to change the oil in a C300 Mercedes or any other vehicle for that matter with this EWK vacuum pump. So if you want to learn how to use the system, stay tuned. Okay, if you're like me, you know, I'm pushing 60 years old now and it's getting tougher and tougher for me to get underneath the car or the truck for that matter. This particular system that I'm going to show you today will work with just about any vehicle. But it really works well with the C300 because the C300's oil filter is on top of the engine. So you don't have to go underneath the car to change the oil filter. All you got to do is go under, underneath the car to, to get the plug out and change the oil. Well with this uh, EWK uh, vacuum pump, you no longer have to do that. And I kind of uh, hesitated to try this. I kind of pushed it off, pushed it off. I didn't trust it. Wasn't quite sure. Um, after doing a lot of research, I finally decided to give it a try. And I found out something. This is the way to go, using a vacuum pump. So I'm gonna show you everything you need to know, what all you need to purchase, and how to use it on changing the oil on your 300. So stay tuned, I'll be right back and I'll show you the different parts. All right, let's talk about this process for a minute. If you're not completely comfortable with this type of process for changing your oil, then don't do it, okay? I was uh, pretty skeptical and I did a lot of research and I decided I was just gonna go ahead and try it. I think by the time I'm done with this video, you'll, you'll be comfortable with it. But if you're not, then go ahead and use this link right here. And that's my standard uh, C300 oil change. You can go to that video and watch it, be, watch it be done the conventional way. Okay, so anyway, now what I did is I selected this particular model. Uh, this is a 6.5 liter model, okay? And they do make a 10, a 10 liter as well. 6.5, it's cutting it fairly close because of, you know, the six and a half quarts in the C300. But, you know, I just, you know, kind of fill it up right to here and then I dump it and then I finish up and there's very little left. So you can, you can basically get it done with this, okay? And now why I went with the EWK was twofold. One, it's got a pump system. Like, I can do it manually if I wanted to. And the best thing that I like about it is, is this right here. This allows me to put my compressor onto this and I can use my, compre my compressor to go ahead and run the pump. And that's what I did on, on my oil change and you'll see that as we go along. I like this unit, it's very well made, it's very rigid, hard plastic, along with metal all in the right places. Uh, the breather and the, um, the valve, everything is all metal. Okay, uh, the shaft's metal. It even has a, a side to put your foot down on it and hold it down if you need to. So it's a, it's a really solid unit. It's got a pour spout on it. So when you take off the um, uh, hose, you can pour this right into a, a container. So I like that as well. Uh, I, I looked at Harbor Freight. I looked at all kinds of them. Um, this one's about $79. It's uh, on Amazon. I'll leave the links down below for all the stuff so you can look at it. But I, I thought this, for me, this was the best one for the money. Uh, the 10 liter one's probably a little better, but it's a lot more expensive as well. So. I didn't go with that, and I'm, this is probably just about right for me unless you're uh, dealing with a lot bigger engines. So this is the one that I decided to go with. Um, it came with um, the hoses as well, three different sides of hoses. And if you'll give me just a minute, I'll grab those hoses and we'll go through it real quick. Okay, I forgot the uh, tubes. So when you get it, it comes uh, pretty good, pretty well packaged. Uh, it's pretty safe in, in uh, what it comes in in the casing. It, it doesn't really come with a lot of instructions and most of these uh, type don't, okay? But there's really not a lot to it, so you don't have to worry about it. It'll come with these three hoses and they're, they're a hard plastic hose, okay? And they come folded up, all right? So when you get them, uh, what I did is I took a, um, a heat gun and I heated them up and straighten them out and I've got them kind of where I, you know where I want them. Uh, the reason I like this one is, is the way this is attaches into the pump it's got this uh, it's a sealed twist on okay it's got a couple of little ties on the side it's got the rubber uh, gasket around it and it goes in right here just lift this up it comes in like this okay you just put that in there and twist it. 
just like this, okay? Now I like that because it's got one, it's got a twist on it, okay? And it's got a pretty good diameter. Now as you get into these things, you're going to find out that the the reason it pumps better is if you've got a, a larger diameter. The smaller it is, like this one, which I don't use, um, the small diameter on this is really difficult to pull that oil through. Okay, If you have to use this small one because your dipstick is small, then you might as well be prepared because it's going to take a while for that oil to get through that, that very small diameter hose. So I like this one because it had a larger hose. It had a secondary hose. Okay which is quite a bit bigger diameter than that small one. Now that small one's a good one and it's got a rod in it that I really like. It has a, like a, um, it helps you keep the form of the hose when you put it down into the dipstick. So I kind of like that, but I didn't use it because it, the diameter on this is very, very small. So what I did is I used these two right here. Okay, and they've got the ends already on them. And you just take that, put it right in here like that, okay? Put this into the EWK. This goes right through your dipstick hole and you're ready to go. Now, when you start to do this process, you wanna slide this in, okay? And you wanna feel, and I'll go over it in the video, when you hit the bottom of that oil pan, you're gonna feel it. You're gonna feel this hit the end of, in the, the bottom of that pan. What I do is I take a zip tie and I tie a zip tie around this so that I know what's the bottom, okay? You want, always want to keep this on the bottom of the pan so you can get out every bit of oil out of that pan. And when we're all done, I'm gonna show you what was left over in my pan because again, I was untrusting. So I wanted to make sure. So what I did is after I was done, I went ahead and got underneath it, took all the covers off and went ahead and put, took the plug out because I wanted to know. And I'll show you the results of that because I. I took the oil that was left over and I put it in a, in a cup and I'll show you that cup. There's very, there's very little left, which is one of the reasons why I'm starting to do, to do this now instead of doing it the conventional way. Okay, so that's the EWK. That's the, the main part of this whole video is this. Okay, so without this, you're really not gonna be able to go forward. All right, so uh, six and a half quarts on the Mercedes and you gotta get the European brand. I use Mobile One, I use uh, OW40. Uh, it's up to you what brand you use in your vehicle. I don't sell oil. Uh, I use this man filter and you'll see on my other videos I use this filter. This is a really good filter. Uh, it comes with the uh, O-ring in it that you need to change out. It's a good solid filter. I've used this filter several times in my Mercedes and it really works well and it's reasonable. It's very, very reasonable. If you look at the oil changes with the Mercedes, you'll absolutely understand what I'm talking about. Okay, you're going to need uh, a filter change wrench. Uh, and remember, you're gonna be on top of the vehicle this time. You're gonna need some rubber gloves and you're gonna need some rags. I'm gonna use, a, I'm gonna use the uh, a socket wrench to change mine out with. This is the medium size wrench and it doesn't have um, a size on it or I'd tell you, but there's a small, a medium, and a large. I believe I got these at Harbor Freight, you know, 10 years ago because they're metal instead of plastic. So anyway, you're going to need that uh, to get that off. You're going to need a couple rags to pack in around the, the top of the engine. But other than that, that's basically everything you're going to need. And you're not going to have to crawl underneath the car again. Okay, so that's everything you need safety wise. All you're going to need is a pair of safety glasses. Uh, you're not going to be putting it up on jack stands. You're not going to be lifting it up, which is great, a lot, lot safer. And I think we're ready to bring the car in and uh, get set up. So we'll be back in a few minutes. All right, let's compare this method to the standard method. Okay, I've done them both ways. I've got a video on YouTube right now for this exact model car on your standard oil change. The advantages of this for me was, the most important thing for me was, is I didn't have to get under the car anymore. That was number one. Okay, I'm pushing 60, like I said, I don't wanna be climbing underneath. The C300 is perfect for this type of oil change because the filter is right there at the front of the compartment of the engine and it's readily accessible when you lift the hood up and then you don't have to go underneath, remove the two panels, uh, take the plug out and change the, uh, uh, the O-ring. There, there's nothing that you need to do underneath the vehicle other than every now and then check to make sure you don't have an oil leak. So that was the thing that I really liked about this process and that's why 
why I went ahead and did it. The other thing is, is C300 is very low to the ground. Okay, you gotta have a special set of ramps or you have to have a lift to change the oil. I have a special set of ramps and, and that's what I used. But it's very expensive to, to take a C300 to the Mercedes dealer and have the oil changed. It's, uh, it's a lot of money. So you're wanting to do it, you're wanting to change it yourself. This is a really good alternative way to do it without getting underneath the vehicle, without driving it up on ramps, worrying about whether you know, you've got it right. Safety factors, there's very little safety involved in this process other than a good pair of safety glasses to make sure you don't get anything in your eyes and some rubber gloves and, uh, and, and towels. I mean, other than that, safety wise, you know, this is a really good uh, process. But again, if you're not comfortable with it, don't do it okay I also highly recommend that you measure everything out you know once you pull uh, the oil out with this measure it up see where it ends up I did and you'll see that in the video as we go along okay so I'm gonna grab the hoses and then uh, I'll go ahead and explain everything that you need for the oil change okay so I got the car pulled in I uh, got everything wiped down ready to go and the first thing we're gonna do is go ahead and prepare the car and you've got to go ahead and take this cover off anyway, so you might as well just go ahead and do it now. And it's the front cover right here along this section. Okay, you just reach underneath this corner right here, pull up, just fold it all the way over. Okay, and it'll just come off just like that. You can go ahead and move it out of the way. And uh, when we get ready to start doing this, I'm going to go ahead and take off the uh, oil cap as well so I can get some you know, get the vacuum out of it. So we'll go ahead and take this off as well. But uh, let me pull over here so make sure you can see where the dipstick is. Okay, that little green deal right there is the dipstick. Okay, you can go ahead and um, pull that out. And we can move it off to the side. Right there it is. Okay. Go ahead and get that out of the way. All right, now your filter is right here. Okay, there's your filter right there. We're gonna do that after. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get my line ran and everything. And then I'll show you how to put that uh, in and we'll start the uh, pump. So we'll be right back in just a few minutes. All right, so I, when I talked earlier, I said that I wanted to use the larger diameter, which is this one right here, okay? But when I was tried to put it in all the way, it didn't go in near as far as what it should have. It only came up, it was only a couple inches into the, uh, into the pan, so I ended up going ahead and using the smaller one because it went all the way up where it should have went, okay? So even though it's a great idea you know, to use that larger diameter so it'll pump faster, we're just not going to be able to do that, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and put the smaller one back in, and it's uh, even the smaller one is, is pretty tight, okay? See, I can force that on down in there, okay? Right there, that's the bottom of the pan right there, okay? All right, and then I'll take the wire out, Just like that, okay? And you don't need to put um, a zip tie on that because it's so tight anyway, it doesn't, it's not going anywhere. It's, uh, it's very, very tight, okay? So now all we have to do is go ahead and put the, uh, the next one in, okay? And I'm gonna go ahead and put the larger one on. Just like that, okay? And I'm going to hook it up to the pump, and then I'll show you exactly what it looks like uh, after it's hooked up to the pump. Okay, so I've got it hooked up to the pump. I'll zoom in there and show you just exactly how that goes in. Okay, if you look on the pump, like I said, this fits right in, and then this goes down, pushes in, and then it twists counterclockwise, okay? Taking it off as clockwise. And there's some little teeth right there, okay? You gotta make sure those little teeth get in there just like that on both sides. The handle moves around, and I even started just a little of it with a handle, and it was already starting to pull the oil. 
which is a good thing. Okay, so right now, you can see on the handle there, right there, okay, I've got it off. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over here so I can put my hose on it. And there's the handle that turns the pressure off and on. Okay, let me grab my hose. We're gonna hook the air up to it. And I haven't done this before either, so uh, this will be a new experience for everybody here. Put my hose out a little bit. But I can tell already, because it's already pulling it, that we should have very, very little issue with it. And then we're gonna let this pull it all out, okay? So, slide this in here. Oil, okay, the air is on. Okay, just like that. Pull out a little bit here. All right, so moment of truth. Let's go ahead and open this up. And almost immediately, it started pulling away. Turn that off just for a second. I mean, as soon as I literally put it on, the, the oil just started running straight down the hose and started running into the uh, into the pump. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to let this uh, fill up. You can already even hear it in there. I'm going to go ahead and leave the air on, let this fill up, and then when I get uh, oh probably up here to this ring right here, the top ring, I'm going to go ahead and stop it uh, because we've got more left in there, and I know this won't hold the six and a half quarts. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and do that, and we will be back. Okay, it took about 40 minutes to get to right here, okay? And I'm gonna go ahead and dump it into a couple of empties that I've got, uh, the mobile ones, because they have the little guide on the side of them and we can uh, measure and see exactly how much oil we got, okay? So the other thing I like about this too is it's got a pour spout on it right here. So when you take off the uh, cap and the hose, it's a little, it's a built-in pour spout. So I'm going to go ahead and pour this in and uh, we're going to measure this up and see what we got. Okay, so uh, there's still a little left in here and I'm right at the, fi at the five quart mark right now. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and swap this out and pull the rest of it out and then I'm gonna put it back on uh, and make sure I've got everything out of there and then I'm gonna do an overall measurement. And then uh, I'll be back and I'll tell you exactly what. Then after I'm done with that, I'm gonna go ahead and get under the car, pull the drain plug and then I'm gonna see what's left in there. I just wanna be sure and then I'll show you what's left. So we'll be back shortly. Okay, so I let that run for an hour. I just went ahead and just let it run, let it run until it just didn't pull anything more out of the vehicle. Okay, and what I got was I got a little over six and a half quarts, okay? And then I went ahead and got underneath, pulled the plug, and this is what came out of the drain plug. About an inch worth and a half liter bottle. And that was it, so. All in all, that was, that was pretty good for me not, you know, I won't have to get under the vehicle anymore. So I think that was, uh, that was pretty decent. Now, if that's not, an, you know, if that's too much left in there for you, then this procedure isn't for you. But for me not being, have, not, for me not having to get underneath the car anymore, that's more than acceptable. And I'm sure, you know, your, your lube places probably don't drain it as thoroughly as I did because I, I let every drop drain out and that's what we ended up with. So now I'm gonna go ahead and reposition everything and I'll show you how to finish to change in the filter out and then we'll put the new oil back in and I'll show you how to reset the computer. We'll be right back. Okay. I'm repositioned and we're ready to go ahead and get the filter pulled out. And so what I'm using for that is, I'm using this uh, filter wrench, I'm, I'm using an extension and a 3 8 okay? Here's the canister filter. It's a canister filter, which means this cover comes off. The canister's inside the cover, okay? That's the design for this. That's what makes this whole thing so nice because once you get used to doing this, you don't ever have to go into the car anymore. Okay, 
So just nice and easy, twist that off. Do it nice and slow. And uh, generally, it's not very messy. I used to pack this with the uh, uh, rags beforehand, but after I've done it for such a, a long time, I realized that it doesn't leak very much. So I'm just go ahead and get this loosened up. Okay. And I, I always let mine set there for just a little bit uh, before I actually pull the cover off. Okay, so we'll go ahead. Have your rag handy. And the filter came out with it. It's got like a little clip in here and there's a little clip there. Sometimes it'll come out with the with the housing and sometimes it'll stay in and you'll have to pull it off. But most of the time it comes out with the housing. Okay? So it really looks nice and clean. I generally don't do much here. I just wipe this out inside. Make sure you do it with a with a clean cloth and not a dirty one. Okay, don't get anything down in here. Okay, because that's your oil. And uh, you don't want anything in there circulating around in your oil. Okay, so now what I'll do is I'll go ahead and set up over on the bench and I'll show you how to put the, the new O-ring in and put the, get the new filter ready to go in. Okay, so we will be right back. Okay, so we got that uh, set up here on the bench, and here's my new filter right here. When you open this up, you should have the filter, and you should have the O-ring, okay? There's my new filter, and there's my O-ring right there. Okay? All right. Okay, just grab this, just like that. There's your old filter. I always just put it right back in the box. All right, now, right here is that ring, this new ring right here, okay? So I usually take a little tool like this. I just reach in here like that. Work it underneath, okay? Take the new one. Slide it right back on. It's really not that difficult. I'm kind of trying to stay out of the way of the camera. All right. Okay. Make sure you get it right into the groove all the way around. And I had a little oil on my hands. I always like to put a little oil around it on that new seal. Okay. Now you can take this. I'm going to go ahead and put this in and show you how it locks into the housing like this. And then I'm going to put this back on. And I just put this back on hand tight. And then I just do a quarter turn uh, with the wrench. Okay, so I'll set back up on that and we'll be right back. Okay, so we're set back up on the vehicle. So now I just take my new filter and it's already got the O-ring already mounted on it right there. Just slide it right in there and then just push down on the top firmly and you'll hear it pop in. Just like that. Okay, then go ahead and take the cover, slide it back on. Don't cross thread it because this is plastic. Okay, it's a hard plastic, but it's still, it's still plastic. Okay, and I just slide that on as, fat, as hard as I can by my hand. Okay, then take that same uh, filter wrench and you're just gonna snug it up with that filter wrench. One quarter turn. Okay, now that's it. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna go ahead and fill it up. Right here, I've already, I got the cap out, cap off already. So I'm gonna go ahead and go ahead and get my funnel set up and I'm gonna put my new wall in. Should be about six and a half quarts. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And then we will be back. Okay, so I put the five quarts in and at five quarts it wasn't on the stick, okay? And that's just about the way it was uh, in my conventional way of doing it, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and put another quart in and check it, we should be on the tip and then I'll just finish it off with a half, we should be just about right. Right there, just go ahead and make sure you snap it back down in those four points. Make sure you got the cap back on good and we are good to go. 
I'll go ahead and I'll show you how to reset the computer insight and then we will call this project good. I'm going to do my very best um, to show you how to reset the service computer. So, uh, you get into your vehicle and you take your keys, put your key in, and what you should see is that display right there, which is the, in mine it's the 2013, it shows the car and shows the mileage. What you're looking for is that mileage. You need to have that showing up on the top. Okay. Then what you do is you turn the key one notch. Once you go just a single notch, no further, you should still have the miles uh, displayed. Then what you do is, the key to this is, is right here, which is your call, call signal for your telephone. It's the one on the very right. And then the OK button. And the, the secret to this is, is touching this button, the call button, just a second before the OK button. If you do that, then you're going to get into the uh, assistance screen and you'll be able to reset um, your service. And sometimes it takes a few tries. So, you just quick and then hold it down. Okay, see the vehicle data? Does mom test an assist plus? Go down to the assist plus, hit OK. Go down to full service, hit OK, and there are your service guides. Mine shows service 2, service 3, service 20. Go down to config full service, hit OK. Service carried out, say yes. Cannot be undone, go down and confirm it. Thanks for watching the video. Uh, if you liked what you saw and it helped you out, please give us a thumbs up. Or better yet, subscribe to our channel. We'd really like to get to a thousand subscribers this year. And we'll have some new videos out to you very soon. Thanks a lot and have a great day.